All right, made it back to my base, and let's go to the village in order to visit the rest of the people's places. Oh yeah, if I took you over here, by the way, I could take you to the Eldritch Guardians and to the Thomcraft Outerlands that Cat Dog and I started our exploration with. Never found the end room with the boss, but I'm sure if I went back there, we could find it. But yeah, back here at the village, one of the first things that happened here was the smeltery for Tinker's Construct, which helped a lot of us get going with our initial resources. And like I said, we used some of these places as initial, um, initial shelters. But in here, a lot of them house books now to get to people's places. And here we can go to Aaron's first uh, starter base. He kind of fell from Mars down to this map from Mod Sauce, and he landed first in this Origin Valley, which he had a real attraction for. And so he used that along with some dark wood from the ominous woods to make a little starter base here and had some initial machines and things going here, but pretty quickly moved to his final base, which was over here. So if we first we get up here, we can take a look from overhead at just the initial design of it. It's very cool. Got four different color-coded rooms that were each going to have stuff from a different mod. It got started, like this one was Industrial Craft, and this one obviously is uh, Tinker's Construct. Um, I'm not sure which one this was going to be. Let's see if he's got the starter stuff here. Looks like this might have was going to be Thomcraft, perhaps. And then did a lot of work down here with his ME system. And I believe these are elevators. And so, yeah, he's got this really pretty pattern uh, with the different cables, the dense cables and the controllers. Uh, it has a lot of different stuff going on with his ME system. So this whole array of storage monitors, which is pretty cool. Completely automated thing with the production of all the processors, processors and then the automated crafting too with the molecular assemblers everything else got his uh well that's the interface terminal but the i'm not sure where his pattern terminal is there it is i'm not haven't done that part yet so still a little out of my league yet but i'm sure it's not that hard um but yeah and oh yeah all his machines as well are all automated as part of his me system and then if we go down below there's even more stuff going on uh down here so at first his whole place was powered with hello his whole place was powered uh with the forestry multi-block farm as well yeah. <laughs> couldn't quite get that guy right away um that's okay like at least i knew he wasn't going to do any damage to the place um let me get back up here so yeah aaron worked really hard not doing a big reactor this time he was challenging himself to do other forms of power. So this was a forestry multi-block farm where he was basically getting um, uh, wood and creating charcoal and getting juice from apples from the trees and had a whole bunch of forestry engines here at first that were then charging up um, this capacitor bank. And then he moved on from that type of power to using a uh, cursed earth mob farm. And so he was generating that. I think he also, yeah, he's got a witch spawner. And I forget if he had another kind of spawner in there um, with cursed earth underneath it. And then he was using that to do this, uh, let me see if I can remember, this form of, I think it was using the form of Ender IO uh, power. Well, he was using the the mob essence, oh, no, okay, yeah, I was using the mob essence in thermal expansion reactive dynamos in combination with the gunpowder as a power source. So running power off of a mob farm, which was pretty cool indeed. So there was that. He was also doing some work uh, with learning how to do the P2P tunnels. Um, I believe that's what this is, where you can pass uh, information from a dense cable through 
much smaller cable um, using the P2P tunnels, which I need to learn more about. And he also was using, uh, I got to look at them to remember their name, but the, the little limiters that come with ME as well, where you can have it monitor the amounts of certain items that are in the system and then use that to then tell machines to turn on and off to process more items and stuff. And then here are all his uh, co-processing units for the auto crafting and some deep storage units. Um, probably, I'm not exactly sure, but probably has a Soren drive in here. Um, all that kind of fancy ME stuff. So let me get myself back out of here. Oh yeah, and in the wall somewhere, let's see where it is. This looks like where it is. He made uh, one of those auto mining machines using these blocks from Funky Locomotion, the, the frame blocks, and then using these mining wells from Buildcraft and had this whole thing where it moved. It carved this whole thing here. He kind of just demonstrated it. He never really sent it off too far into the world, but it was just a personal challenge to build the thing. Um, so it's very cool. If we could get to the front of it, they would see the annihilation planes from um, Applied Energistics at the front that are kind of carving out the front of the machine while the mining wells keep moving all the way, cutting all the way down. So that was very cool indeed. All right, so let's head on back to the village via his starter base and head back to Spawn Town. So yeah, there's Aaron's stuff. And Fuego was never going to do Thomcraft, so he just kept putting all his Thomcraft stuff in there to give away. And Fuego also set up the Cheaty Weedy Easy Emerald Farm. Thanks to Botania, villagers now randomly poop emeralds, as do lots of other creatures. They don't all poop emeralds, but whatever they do, like there's squid over there that have hoppers under them. They, they drop their ink sacks just randomly. And so, yeah, in these chests are just full of emeralds. So I actually tried to get my emeralds legit, but I never was able to get many by quarrying, even though I did tons of quarrying. So I did partake of these quite a bit. Thank you guys <laughs> for your opulent poop. And let me see. So here from Spawn, it's a good place to get to everybody else's base. So we need to visit Blizzard and Brink and that's Blizzard again and Dr. Ragehard and Cat Dog Pig Duck. So let's go through all those real quick and we shall be done. But let's try to do justice to each one of these guys' places. So f one of the first things Blizzard Penguin did is, well, he carved the starter base into the bottom of those jaded cliffs over there, right in that little hole right there. Some machines and things in there I could show you. But he made this MFR auto spawner for the community here. I just, out of, out of principle, never used the thing, even though I'm not above using these things. I was just trying to challenge myself the same way that, that Aaron was challenging himself not doing the big reactors. But he had this whole automated thing set up where you can put in safari nets and swords and take them out without ever going in there to process all your stuff. Uh, Blizzard was also the first one who found the end portal stronghold that uh, took us to the end where I went and grabbed all my ender lilies. So that was very cool. But over here, we can go to his main base to Pengu under the sea. And we are underwater now. It's very cool. Let's just take a look from up here first. But he has this whole underwater complex. It gets some night vision going on. So yeah, I'll show you what each of these are real quick. Um, but it's very, very neat. This is a greenhouse. In there, uh, we've got full of MFR farms. We'll take a walk real quick. These are all full of a big reactor with turbines. One of these is for blood magic. One is for witchery. And there's another spot for Batania. I think that's the one. I know them from inside better than I know them from outside. Um, but just wanted to give you a quick, quick survey 
from here. And this is an electric locomotive from Railcraft going up to the Honeycomb Farms. And then way up there somewhere, not quite rendering in, I'll show you at the end, is the Coliseum, which he made, which is super cool as well. Lots of hard work done on this server. Lots of very cool projects. Which is why I'm making this extra long multi-part episode. Make sure you see everything everybody else has done in case you were not viewers of theirs. Um, so one of the things he made, and we'll use this to get back, is he used elevators down into Miscraft crystal portals as a way, another way to teleport, which is pretty cool. I don't want to do that right now because I don't want to go somewhere else. But did a lot of work to kind of create, carve out this futuristic interior. Did quite a bit of stuff with uh, Implied Energetics, Implied Energistics ME Networks as well. Even tried to create this teleporter with the spatial pylons with Applied energistic, Energistics, which is really cool. There were some issues with it. He did successfully do it. He also successfully teleported himself into an ME drive and had to be well rescued by Chillum at one point which was hilarious. I love that part. And let me see, take you down the various passageways to the different areas. So yeah, here we are inside the mine factory reloaded greenhouse. So all the different auto farms in there. And so it's farming. And then if we see, come around over here to this passage, It'll take us to, uh, let me see, his Cursed Earth Witch Farms. Lots of Cursed Earth Witch Farms here. Oh yeah, this is one of my favorite things he did. Is he used the crayon blocks to keep the liquid glowstone, the energized glowstone, whatever the official name for it is, uh, from floating up. So that's very cool. He used uh, auto, auto brewers to make potions to run these uh, these 64 time potions generators, uh, which were really cool. I think these are the 64 times. I'm not exactly sure. But yeah, using potions for power uh, before he put in the big reactors, which was very neat. Oh yeah, these are the big reactor turbines and the MFR laser drills uh, for each one, getting him ridiculous amounts of resources. And then in here, yeah, this is the Botania room that he had from uh, that I, we saw from above, and did a lot of work on that. And embarrassingly, I'm not exactly sure how you get to the Witchery Dome from here, but that uh, he also used crayon blocks, uh, which is very cool to keep the water out of the dome, even though you can go right through it. So we could go up there and go in that way. But the thing I really want to show you is, of course, I've always had a love for Railcraft. And he's got the electric locomotive here, which I've never used before, but it's on all these electric rails. And woohoo! It goes on this little underwater tunnel that with these translucent glass blocks, so you can kind of tell you're underwater, stuff's going on there. So that's super neat and it's going to take us over to where he was going to do his bee stuff didn't quite finish that and i think it's going to kick me off right here and turn around and it's very cool and so uh i guess i'll take the ride back <laughs> it's got that nice little buzzy horn i'll just speed through this so we can get on to the next guy Okay, the train has kicked us off at the end of the line, and let's go ahead and use uh, those special little teleporters here, the little elevator uh, crystal portal combination, and you just press shift, go down. You can kind of see it for a second, but it's something different, something cool. Right on. So from here, the closest one to go to is Brink's house. Oh. <laughs> We've got a fallen knight down here. Thinks he's going to do something. Anyway, Brink, this is Brink's second spawn base right here. Oh, and by the way, um, Blizzard actually ran a track all the way from his base. 
which is thousands of blocks away, which is really cool. I had challenged him to do that, and he said he wasn't going to, but apparently he did. But yeah, this is Brink's uh, second spawn base here, right next to the big uh, Meteor Crater, which is really cool. But his first base, um, to his amusement and ours, burned down when he was holding a piece of Firestone from Railcraft. And when you're holding it, it caused fires. This whole base burnt down. He built this one towards the end of his time on the server, so he never had the chance to really populate it. But it's a really nice piece of architecture. Very, very cool. Brink is an awesome builder. And he's got a Quanta Bridge over there. But his main base is out here. It's a big old epic thing. Let's get outside for a second. Try to get a view of the whole complex. So, yeah. Big old giant epic tower complex with lots of stuff going on. I think this is Abyssal Stone? Yeah. I actually never ran across any of this stuff, or maybe you make it. I don't know. Never found that stuff, but I would love to use it. So, this, this one was Botania. Let's see. This one. Let's see. Look in the window over here. Oh, yeah. This was the Cursed Earth Farm, uh, Witch Farm. And then, let me see. Let's check out the other towers real quick. I watched all the episodes, but I forget which tower is witched now. So this one is Thermal Expansion. And then over here, we've got Witchery. So that's very cool. And we saw this one already, right? Yeah. Oh, no. Uh, oh, this looks like... Uh, is that more Witchery Farm stuff? I believe it is. And uh, those are Reverwood. Okay, very cool. So let's head back in here. To his main base part. So this is where his big reactors are. And Brink also did a lot of work with his Emmy system. A lot of episodes where he was hooking up various tricky things. Um, down below, there's a whole piped in area. And, whoops. In the basement. And he was doing lots of automation and setup with things from down here. Uh, these were the things I was trying to remember the name of. The ME level emitter, emitters, so set up automated production of dusts and ingots and so on. Oh, I'm actually within the guts of things here. There we go. Um, so that things would only be used or produced as they were needed. <laughs> Sorry to be putting holes through your walls here, Brink. Um, but yeah, here is the main part of it. He had tons of auto crafting going on. There's the processors and the auto crafters and the molecular assembler chambers and so on and so forth. So all very cool. And yeah, and then he had this portal. I believe this one goes back to spawn. And I'm not sure if I should risk pulling the lever or not, but he had it so that it was retractable or coverable with all these blocks here. So that's very cool. And then he's got his captive squid giving him ink <laughs> so there is a very quick overview of brink world and then onward let's do a quick stop with uh rage over here rage had a lot of stuff going in life so he his brisit his visits here were kind of brief but he tried to do something nice in the time he spent here Let's see, let me get to the front of this. So, he mainly was making his starter base like an art piece. He was using lots of micro blocks and so on to try to decorate the place and create a real ambiance in here. Didn't get too far with production of resources and such, but did get this nice little, little woodsy house made. And then over here, he's got his fishing shack. And he was making paths and stuff for that. And yeah, nice little fishing hut with a little bit of Ender IO stuff in there. I think he was maybe cooking his fish in there, putting them on the drying rack. Yep. And then let me see back up here. Somewhere, and some of the micro blocks got corrupted during one of the updates. So that's why one of the, some of these look like dark leaf blocks as well. 
He's also got kind of his art piece mine shaft uh, with lots of little micro blocks partially chipped away. Um, kind of like Disneyland, doesn't really go anywhere. <laughs> it's more of a stage set, but uh, very good looking. So there is that, Dr. Rage. And then, let me see, let me get my bearings back here. Cat dog. Pig Duck had a little art prank here. He was making heads of himself. There was one down at Blizzard's base that he put next to uh, the penguin head. And this one graces Spawn with all its shiny self. I was going to prank him back and build a, a cat, pig, dog, duck thing going on with it. Give it a body and some ears and stuff. But I never got around to that. <laughs> and then uh, over here, he made the Primus symbol to. Help do a little marketing for the server, and you can see it when you're over here. This is actually a cat dog pig duck thing here too. Uh, he was th this is just he was testing. This is probably meant to come down later, but he was testing. I forget what it is. This thing in Batania that can create these different colored blocks, and that's the place he set up for fighting the Gaia Guardian. And then we can take this path all the way to his base over here. So as much as Brink and Aaron say we're technical guys, uh, Cat Dog Pig Duck is the magic guy. He's all about Batania and witchery and all and Thomcraft and all that kind of stuff. So this was his starter base right here, and got some nice lines going on in it. And this housed his initial Thomcraft operations. We've got the V Relay and the Infernal Furnace and chess, chess, chess everywhere. He never got to a, a ME system, so <laughs> spent a lot of his episodes digging through chess. But that was very cool, very eccentric. Up here is the Infusion Altar, so where he made lots of stuff, way more stuff than I ever got to. He made all the wands and the scepters and the staffs and all kinds of goodies from Thomcraft, which hopefully we'll make more of next time ourselves. He's got the golems over here chopping down trees for his wood farm. Looks like things have gotten a little stuck for the moment there, but this has been fully operation, making charcoal. Uh, oops. With this infernal furnace over here, so using magic, to create charcoal and then he wasn't stopping there let me see over in this one uh, this beautiful tower of power with the well-fed hungry node up top and then a couple different layers to it let me see if i can find a layer that where he's turning the charcoal into alimentum is it down below here Oh, wait, wrong thing. Yeah. So you have the alchemical constructs and all that kind of stuff down here, making alimentum out of the charcoal and getting tons and tons of power out of it, or at least potential for power. 826,000 alimentum and uh, keeping his giant capacitor tank. That uh, capacitor bank quite full. Wee! <laughs> and more chests and chests and chests and stuff. And then he is generally very anti MFR because, uh, oh, look at this. Well, one thought at a time. I'm going to take you over to where his uh, auto spawner is, but that's kind of inconsequential because he wasn't really that into MFR, but it, he did cave into it a little bit. Um, this was his wither, wither killing cage. He found that the the focus of frost actually was one of the best things for killing withers. So this is where a lot of withers met their deaths and transformed, used the wand of equal trade, transform a lot of the, uh, these giant trees into works of art. Those are all very pretty. And let me see the, where to go. Uh, one of these, there's the portal to Alfheim. Uh, that's the one I was looking for. This is where his MFR auto spawner uh, is. 
And then finally, beyond uh, the the farming station from Ender IO and all the Batania madness going on and the Kekamuras being fed auto crafted cakes and such, up here he used a shard of Lapita to raise this island for further exploits with witchery. And so this is where his main witchery stuff was, the or is the altar and the circles and he would bring in de various demons and imps and things in here and the imps would go yes please can i help you <laughs> and this is the birth of the trephids and all kinds of stuff very cool looking indeed and got all the witches ovens and rowans and stuff and oh yeah and here let me see are the owls. Let's see if he still has any owls. He created some owl familiars. Oh yeah, that one needs that big old key to get in here. Yeah, and he put in a, a sound muffler because these guys are very noisy, but they're very cute. You can kind of hear them in the back. Of course, when I wait for them, they all go quiet. Oh, there you go. Can you hear that? Yeah. The owl familiars from Witchery. Right on. So... Did I get everybody? Hopefully I did. Oh, I didn't get Schnix, but Schnix was hardly on at all. He was on for a little bit over here in Spawn. He had created a cool little microblock throne, but it also got infected with the dark wood leaves uh, or whatever they were called. Somebody took it down. I'm not sure, but this was his starter house here. He was going for really basic. Uh, this was sort of a precursor of him going fully vanilla. But you see, he hasn't been here for a while, so things have gotten a bit overgrown. Got cobwebs and got moss growing on his walls and vines and leaves and trees and stuff like that. <laughs> I'm stuck in a cobweb. I was thinking of pranking him at some point and using a shard of Lapita and just leaving his taking his whole disused hovel and sending it off into the air where it could get the attention it deserved. <laughs> but ran out of time to do that. And then the last few features in town here are, um, this is cat dog, pig duck made the wand recharging dojo. So that's very, very cool. I use this quite a bit. Uh, I got the wand recharge pedestal here, the compound recharge focus and, he brought most of these uh, the, the, these nodes in here. I brought a few more in to supplement it. That's very cool. This here is my mob versus mob arena. And it has gone through many, many iterations. Right now I've got it set up fairly simply. Mainly just to reduce the lag on the server. Right now I'm just using Kurther spawners. But what's unique about it is that they're fighting each other. So there's no grinder necessary. It is self-grindy. <laughs> These guys will just continue to fight to the death. The thing that's making that happen down below here is uh, some Batania flowers. This one here, the High Side Dream, is doing most of the work. There's also this Tangleberry here, which when I had spiders up there on Cursed Earth, this kept them from crawling out. And this, uh, oops, Mana Star was telling me whether my mana protection was positive or negative. And then I had, yeah, I keep getting stuck on things. Automatic shutoff uh, via, via these gates and pipe wire that shut the whole thing off right here. Um, when the pool was full, which is, is happening, um, it's right here. Although I guess it's not fully shut off. I gotta work on that. The um, these guys, the endo flames, are getting fed by. I guess if the other one was the monkey puzzle five thousand, this is like the monkey puzzle five hundred thousand or five million. They got the little the universal hopper ducks, whatever they're called from pneumatic craft. What do you guys call the omnidirectional hoppers, and so on? Because the amount of power or amount of mana I was needing at one point was phenomenal because instead of just doing the uh, the uh, spawners up there with the cursed earth, 
Um, oh, and before I finish that thought, let me just show you down real quick. I've got vacuum hoppers, and all the armor and such is being uh, filtered out here, uh, put in the trash. And then in here, we're just collecting all the goods. These first four chests were for the community, anything anybody wanted to grab from here. And then the overflow went into my ME system right here, of which there was quite a bit. But the other thought I was trying to say before is originally I had this cursed earth here where where you could see these chiseled mossy blocks are that look different from these. And so it wasn't a ton of spawns here, but we were spawning everybody, including creepers. And I had a tiger bloom down here that kept the creepers from exploding so that uh, they wouldn't wreck the place <laughs> when they all fought. And so I was going for that. The Tiger Bloom used up tons and tons of mana. Um, and never really worked out. Once in a while, they still managed to explode. And then uh, not only would the Creeper start doing damage, which wasn't as bad because I have this whole place is warded for the most part. Ooh, some lag there. So they couldn't really blow this place up, but it was the, the Ender Zoo Concussion Creepers that really wrecked things, because they would teleport uh, the, all the mobs out, and then we'd have mobs running all over the place, blowing stuff up, still fighting each other initially, and yeah, that was just mayhem. <laughs> but anyway, that was all very fun, uh, but now it's just the curse, the cursed earth, or not the cursed earth, well, the cursed earth under spawners, but I use that to produce quite a bit of zombie flesh, and skeleton bones and stuff that I needed for other projects along the way. So I think that is pretty much the full tour. Um, oh yeah, one last thing over here, besides the uh, flying locomotive that came all the way from Blizzard's place and <laughs> landed in the lagoon here, is the last thing I did is I made the Primus Pub over here as a place for everybody to sit down and have a drink and bond and uh, talk about what was going to happen next on the server. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that was, I only made that a couple weeks ago and I got it stocked here with uh, all these drinks that I made from, I believe these come from Extra Trees. So this is a pint of peach cider. Ah, all from Benny's Mods. We got peach cider, we've got brandies we got cherry brandies and plum wines and brandies and peach stuff and and they've got some hard liquor up there fruit liquors and spirits down here is where the brewery operation is uh, so these were all from extra trees Benny's mods as well got the fruit press and the brewery and the distillery and the fluid transposer that i was using as a bottler I cheated in these glasses because there's no way to make them yet, but they're the only way that you can actually drink the ciders and the wines and the, and the brandies and the liquors. Um, but I traded a, a full glass bottle for every one of these. So f for materials, it was fair and just had to have some way ah, to enjoy these refreshing beverages. I never did quite figure out how to make beer, but yeah, we've got this nice, clean uh, brewery distillery. In the basement, oops, in the basement of the bar. And if I can just get up <laughs> through these carpenters' hatches, they're kind of glitching on me. But yeah, and the uh, bar has history. This is the ancient rock from the Thomcraft Outer Lands. So, uh, got stories that can be told while we sit here and serve drinks or. Whatever. If any of you guys make it on the on to the server before it uh, gets reset, it's an open bar. So please help yourselves. <laughs> Let me finish my cider and uh, maybe take another drink for the road. Glassware goes back in there. Use the carpenter safes to uh, have a way to make some little coolers back here. And still, um, let me see what you want. Some plum wine. Or let's take some plum brandy, I guess, and still keep the texture of the ancient rock. And yeah, a little outdoor seating on the deck here. And over here, we bring a date onto the server. A nice little 
romantic spot, <laughs> chill out by the fire. So, folks, that's going to be it for the Primus Direwolf 20 server. I'm going to save this uh, world, um, but I'm probably going to turn my attentions to the next thing. So, the idea for Primus is they want to reset uh, with the Infinity mod pack, which I'm not too excited about because there's not a whole lot of difference between the Infinity mod pack and the Direwolf mod pack. So I'll put some effort into that, but, but since I know now that the playing on the server is not always that long term, at least for my play style, I'll probably invest less into the really grindy mods, like probably won't do all the Thomcraft research and do all the bee breeding and tree breeding and stuff, and probably spend more time just building pretty things and doing collabs with the guys. I think the main focus for all that kind of stuff, the really in-depth projects that I like to do, where I can have a guarantee that I'm going to be able to keep doing them as long as I need to, is for now, uh, get, unless I have a better idea, is I've been working on starting a Resident Rise 3 server, where I've got uh, its mainline, but with a lot of the optional mods added, Pretty much every mod that I have any interest in on the whole pot pack is on there. And eh, maybe I'll go sit in the hot tub <laughs> to finish this up. Ah. <laughs> yeah, so that's where I'm, I think I'm going to put my main focus from here. All of the guys here are welcome to join me as well. Uh, the, the only difference is, is that I'm just going to have that server myself so I can guarantee that the world can keep going on ah, as long as I want it to, and as long as you all want it to. So if you all have other ideas for the future, please let me know. That's the general plan. I hope I have said most of the things I wanted to say in here and that I've shown you uh, most of the stuff that is going on. And with that, I am Steel Monkey Puzzle, and I am signing out now from the Dire Wolf 20 Primus server. Minecraft 1.7.10. Thank you for joining me till the very end. Bye bye. <laughs>